Medically assisted dying in Canada has recently become approved. This means that patients who are suffering with chronic pain have the option to end their life. Now, I know a lot of these patients who have lost complete hope, but we have a lot of new research that can give them hope. So which research am I talking about? So research into the immune system has really clarified what is the root cause of chronic pain. We have two main types of chronic pain. There's one called neuropathic and one called nociceptive. Neuropathic pain is where your central nervous system, meaning your brain or your spinal cord or the nerves that communicate with them have been damaged or the signals that are going to the spinal cord or to the brain are malfunctioning. And then this causes chronic pain. And this is very, very difficult to treat. There's only a few options such as chronic pain medications, like nerve pain medications. Sometimes they'll do cortisone. Sometimes they'll do spinal cord stimulators, but these all have varying results and don't guarantee anything for anyone. Now there's also something called nociceptive pain, which is something more people are common with. That's where you just injure a tissue, such as a ligament, a tendon, a joint. People are much more familiar with this because almost everyone has had a sprain or strain in their life. And typically this is just treated with ice, rest, physiotherapy, and most of the time it'll get better. And sometimes if it doesn't, a lot of these patients are left with the option of cortisone or surgery or drugs. This is very exciting because we finally know that the root cause of chronic pain actually relates to the immune system. Specifically what happens is when there's nerve damage, you get what's called damage associated molecular patterns and pathogen associated molecular patterns, DAMPs or PAMPs. So PAMPs and DAMPs bind to what are called pattern recognition receptors. And these receptors signal a cascade of inflammation. After binding to the pattern recognition receptors, you get what's called an inflammatory cascade. Essentially, you get these cytokines, which are proteins, which signal to the body that there's inflammatory process happening. So you get all these different proteins coming into the area from the immune system. So you get interleukins, you get inflammatory macrophages, you get, you get metallomatrix proteins or MMPs. So there's all these different molecules that come to the area that cause chronic inflammation. And we know that the gut plays a role in this as well. Now, of course, anytime we talk about the immune system, we have to talk about the gut. That's because 70 to 80% of your immune system is actually in the gut. So what happens with chronic pain in the gut? So we know just like with any other autoimmune disease, you get what's called intestinal permeability or leaky gut. And that essentially means that the immune system cells are supposed to stay in the gut, leak out, and they can get translocated into different areas. So for example, in this recent study, they found that in the spinal cord that there was actually signs of inflammation cells and there's actually signs of bacteria called lipopolysaccharides that can only be translocated from the gut. That's why we have studies showing that when patients take antibiotics, their chronic back pain can actually improve. Why is that? Is it because they're getting rid of some of the inflammation and some of the bacteria that have translocated from the gut into the back, into the spine specifically? However, as you guys know, antibiotics can also kill good bacteria, and so you're not actually balancing it. The key to all this is balancing, or what's called immunomodulation. So if you get too much pro-inflammatory and you don't have enough anti-inflammatory, that's what leads to chronic pain. So we have to figure out how can we modulate or regulate this immune pathway. Now with nociceptive pain, funny enough, it's actually the same mechanism. We know in the synovial membrane that lines a cartilage in any joint, that's where the innate immune system also becomes reactive and starts that same process of inflammation that we were talking about earlier. So if we know chronic pain, whether it's nociceptive or neuropathic, relates to chronic inflammation, which relates to the gut, it all comes back to how can we restore immune dysfunction. So restoring immune dysfunction is a multi-targeted approach. So you can't just give pain meds for it because that's not going to solve it. Of course, they can help temporarily, but eventually many people adapt or they build tolerance and it doesn't work anymore. The only way I see to treat this is what's called a multi-targeted approach. That means we're trying to target as many different mechanisms as we can that we know is leading to the chronic pain. So we have to treat the inflammation at the site of the nerve. We have to try to restore signaling. We have to try to modulate the immune system via the gut as well. Our protocol for treating really challenging cases of chronic neuropathic pain involves intravenous stem cells, involves fecal microbial transplants, and involves peptides, as well as injections of stem cells at the local site as well. So why do we use all these different therapies? The intravenous stem cells reduce systemic inflammation, they help to restore the gut lining, the fecal microbial transplant increases microbial diversity, which helps with good bacteria, and we know that the good bacteria help to produce what's called butyrate, and that butyrate helps to produce M2 macrophages. And those M2 macrophages help reduce inflammation, and they modulate the environment. So this all comes back to the same principle. We're trying to modulate the environment, and we're trying to make it less pro-inflammatory. In addition to this, we also use peptides. With peptides, there's so many different peptides, but TB4 and BPC-157 are the two most common people are using. The reason for this is because of their strong immunomodulating properties as well. Meaning again, it can shift the immune system from 
pro-inflammatory to anti-inflammatory. Now we're, when we do all this, we're combining all these different approaches to make sure we're hitting all the different mechanisms and we're giving the best chance of success. These are not easy cases and these are patients who have tried everything. So what we're really trying to do is meet an unmet need. Chronic pain is still very unmet. Many people are suffering and I think we've developed a protocol that's very comprehensive. I know many other doctors doing similar protocols. So if you are suffering with chronic pain, don't give up because you have to look at the mechanisms and unfortunately most doctors are not treating it. So with no susceptive pain, it's not as tricky. Usually we can just do a local injection into the shoulder or knee with stem cells and people will do great. Even PRP sometimes is good enough for that. But with chronic neuropathic pain, it's much more complicated. That's why I recommend the multi-target approach with all the different interventions combined into one. So I've had cases with patients, for example, with arachnoiditis, which is severe, severe nerve pain. And these patients often do want to kill themselves and just want to end their lives. We've been fortunate to help some of these patients using our protocols and honestly save their life. So there are hundreds of millions of people suffering with chronic pain who have lost hope. So because there are so many people suffering with chronic pain, one of my passions is to try to help as many people as possible. So we're going to continue to innovate and provide the best treatments available.